Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering today's video, we'll be looking at components and resultants and we are going to find the resultant of two forces using the parallelogram law or you can call it the parallelogram rule. Same thing, just different ways to say it. So first step you want to do when using the parallelogram law is, well, you want to make sure that you only have two forces that you have to find the result of, because if you're using more than two, it makes it a little bit harder. Not a little bit, it makes it a lot bit, a lot bit harder. So what we're going to do is that we are going to draw a free body diagram of this um, object shown right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a coordinate system and we are going to make this point right here in the center where these two forces combine our coordinate system. We're going to make this the X and the vertical the Y. So what we're going to do is we're going to redraw this as is as a free body diagram. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And what you want to do with the parallelogram rule is you want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of room because you're going to have to draw a parallelogram here. And the larger you have it, the easier it will be to put everything on. So there's my Y and there's my X. So let me scroll down just a little bit further here. Make that little bottom portion that Y just a little bit longer here. So there's my origin point. And then I have my two forces, which I had 800 pounds in this direction. And then I have 500 pounds down here. Oh, give me my pen back, please. Then I had 500 pounds down here like this. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the scale. The better it is to scale, the better it will be, but it's just a free drawing here. So then we have this, which is 60 degrees off of the X, and then the 500 is 35 degrees off of the X. So that is my free body diagram. So I took that picture, moved it into a free body diagram. If you want to scroll up just real quick. So this is what we have. And then we turned it into this. So what you're going to do is you are going to form a parallelogram using these two forces. And this is how you do it. You will take one of the forces. Let's look at the 800. You are going to copy it as is, and then you're going to paste it down here at the end of the 500. So copying and pasting the 800 will look something like this. And then you're going to repeat that process for the 500 here. You're going to copy it and you're going to paste it at the end of the other 800 that was originally there. Well, that kind of forms, looks like a square, um, but it's supposed to be a parallelogram. Not the best drawler in the world. So <clears throat> that's what we have. Now we have formed a four-sided shape and it is a parallelogram made up of two sides of equal forces here. So we have 800, 800, 500, and 500. So your resultant force between these two will go from corner to corner. So it will go from where the two original forces act to where the two new copied and paste forces collide. So it's going to be along this line right here. That is going to be my resultant force. So let's throw on some information that we do know here because we do have some angles. So this total angle between the 800 and uh, 500 is 95 uh, degrees. So this angle over here is also 95 degrees. Well, when using the parallelogram um, law, you want to find the angle that is opposite your resultant value, which would be this one right here. And since this is a parallelogram, this angle right here will also be the same. And we're just going to call those lowercase c for right now. So how do we find that angle that's opposite our resultant? Well, a four-sided shape has 360 degrees in it. We know two of the angles, 95 and 95. And since it's a parallelogram, the other two angles will be equal in magnitude. So we can actually solve for that. So my little angle c will be 360 degrees minus off two of my 95 degrees, and then divide it by two because they are two equal angles opposite my resultant. This gives me 85 degrees for each of these angles here. So 85 
and then 85. All righty. So what we're looking at now is that we can utilize one of the two triangles that have formed here. So we have this upper triangle here and this lower one right here. It doesn't matter which one you utilize, you just have to make sure that you're using the correct angles when you pull out the one triangle. So let's go ahead and let's look at the bottom triangle, for instance. So utilizing this bottom triangle, I'm just gonna redraw it real quick so it looks something like this. So we have 500, we have 800, and then we have our unknown R. So R, 800 pounds, 500 pounds down here. And then this angle is 85 degrees. We don't know what this one is and we don't know what this one is. So I'm just gonna call this one theta for right now. And then we'll just call this one, let's just call that beta for right now. So, well, whenever you have a triangle and you have two of the sides known, the third side is unknown, but the angle opposite your third side is known, you can use the law of cosines. So using the parallelogram rule, you are most likely going to have to use the law of cosines or the law of sines. You're definitely probably going to have to use the law of sines somewhere. It's just a matter of what your parallelogram looks like that you would have to use the law of cosines. But more than likely, you're going to have to use the law of cosines and the law of sines. So the law of cosines will be used when you have two of the sides known and the angle opposite your unknown side that is known, which is what we have here. So the law of cosines equation is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus off to A, B cosine of the opposite angle of the side C. Well, we'll make A the 500, we'll make B the 800 side, Little c will be the angle of 85, and then our large c side will be our resultant value. So one thing that a lot of people forget to do, which is an easy mistake, because this is a squared side, in order to find that unknown side, you have to square root that entire right side of the equation. Easy mistake, easy thing to overlook here. So let's go ahead and fill this in. So our resultant is going to be 500 pounds squared plus 800 pounds squared minus off two times the 500 times the 800 again, and then cosine of my angle opposite my R, which is 85 degrees. And then don't forget, square root that entire thing. And when you calculate this out, you will get 905.6 pounds in that general upright direction. So there's one of my answers is finding the resultant. Now, when you're finding the resultant, you also have to locate the resultant. And locating the resultant means you have to find it from one of the axis points. Typically, it'll be off of the x-axis is what you're looking for here. So we'll just call that alpha. So how do we get alpha? Well, based upon my little triangle down here, this angle right here from the resultant to the 500 is theta. Well, I know that the 500 to the x is 35. So if I can find theta, I can use this 35 degrees then to get my location of my resultant alpha. Well, what do we utilize here? Well, we now have this resultant side known of 905. We have the opposite angle of it known. And we are looking for one internal angle of this triangle. Anytime you have this kind of setup where all sides are known, one interior angle, angle is known, you can use the law of sines to solve for this. So we are going to use the law of sines to solve for my angle theta here. So if you remember from the law of sines, you would have your A side is equal to the sine of the opposite angle, which is equal to your B side divided by the sine of the angle opposite it, which is equal to your C side times the angle, or divided by the sine of the angle that is opposite. So let's just go ahead and plug in here. So we have our resultant at 905.6 pounds divided by the sine of the angle opposite it, which is the 85 degrees. That is going to be equal to the 800 pounds and the sine of the angle that is opposite the 800, which is the theta here. So I can solve this ratio, rearrange, solve for theta, you just cross multiply and rearrange here. Let's scroll down first. 
So I'm going to throw this in this little corner right here to save some room. So we have theta is equal to the sine inverse of 800 sine of 85 divided by 905 from the resultant. And that gives me an angle for theta of 61.6 degrees. Please, I haven't mentioned this yet, but please make sure your calculators are in degrees if the angles are given in degrees. Otherwise, you're going to get really wrong answers here. So now we have theta of 61 degrees right here. So this is 61.6 degrees. So we can subtract off the 35 from that, and we can get alpha, which is our location. So the location of the resultant is going to be 61.6 degrees minus off 35 degrees. And that gives us a total of 26.6 degrees off of the X. So what we typically would what we would typically do is just redraw it real quick with the resultant on there just to show the location. So there's the X, there's the Y, my point of my origin. There's my resultant of 905.6 pounds, and my angle off of the X is 26.6 degrees. And that would be my final answer of the resultant acting between those two original forces. And that's how you would solve for it using the parallelogram rule. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved in this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please uh, like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that really does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.